Look at your neighbor real quick and say, neighbor, welcome home. Come on, look at your other person and say, neighbor, welcome home. I know it might be your first time here, but I pray that you realize that you didn't walk into a foreign place, but this place is a place that we call home and we believe um, that you can call it home too. But we need a little bit of a bigger place to call home. Um, Jesus. Oh, my Lord. Just got here. <laughs> All right, I'll deal, I'll deal with that, me and the Lord, later on today. Um, are y'all ready for the word? Um, I got a lot of ground to cover today, and so I'm going to jump straight in. Um, for those of you who are new to our building, I want to I wanna tell you something real quick. We are a demonstrative house. Um, and so if somebody hollers next to you while I'm preaching, don't, they, they're not crazy, they're not strange, they just received the truth just now. They just received the truth. And when you've been living according to the lies of the enemy and you receive a truth, something stirs up in you. And I refuse, I refuse to be quiet. The devil wasn't quiet when he was lying to me. He was pretty loud with his declarations. And so when the Lord gives me a better word over my life, I'm not going to be silent about it. Come on, I'm not going to be silent, but I receive the word with gladness. The Bible said with joy we draw water out of the wells of salvation. I just said all that just to say we got to talk back church. We got to talk back church. And so, so excuse us if we... If we if we whistle, excuse us. That's a new one, but excuse us if we whistle today. Amen. Genesis, the 35th chapter. I'm going to read verses 1 through 3 uh, and then 6 through 7. As always, I would love for you to read it on your own, but uh, for our purposes today, 1 through 3, 6 through 7. Scripture says this. It says, God said to Jacob, arise, go up to Bethel and dwell there. Make an altar there to the God who appeared to you when you fled from your brother Esau. So Jacob said to his household and to all who were with him, put away the foreign gods that are among you and purify yourselves and change your garments. Then let us arise and go up to Bethel so that I may make there an altar to the God who answers me in the day of my distress and has been with me wherever I have gone. Verse 6. And Jacob came to Luz, that is Bethel, which is the land of Canaan, he and all the people who were with him. And there he built an altar and called the place El Bethel, because there God had revealed himself to him when he fled from his brother. You may take your seats in the presence of the Lord. You can be seated if you have a seat in the presence of the Lord. <laughs> And so today on, on this homecoming coming Sunday, um, we're going we're gonna to dive into a word from the Lord with a title that might be a throwback for some of you. And for some of you, it might be just a little bit too far back, but go with me anyway. Our title today is Back to the Future. Back to the Future is our title for today. And now if you know the movie, then you might be a little bit old. But if you know, if you know the movie... You know it's about this young kid named Marty McFly. Uh, what a name, Marty McFly. Uh, and with the help of this, this mad scientist, Marty gets to travel back in time to change events that ultimately will affect his future. But today, I am going to spare you and not talk to you about traveling scientists or DeLoreans. Watch the movie. It's a good movie, y'all. But today, we're going to talk about a God who, in his infinite wisdom, sometimes calls us to go back. Not so that we can change the past, not so that we can relive past mistakes or our past victories even, but so that we can remember the promise, so that we can renew our strength, and so that we can be propelled forward into the future he has prepared for uh, Sometimes God takes you back to the place of the first encounter. 
He takes you back to the place where you heard his voice so clearly that it silenced every one of your doubts to the place where his presence was so powerful that it ignited, it stirred a fire on the inside of your soul. It's the place where his promises were spoken over your life. It's the place where your faith took root. It's the place where your hope was nourished. Some of y'all are going back there right now. Sometimes he takes you back so that you can remember who he is and who you are in him so that when you step forward, you step forward with a renewed confidence and an unwavering faith. And maybe you're sitting here today thinking, why would God take me back? The past is over. The moment has passed away. But I want to remind you that God's ways are higher than our ways, that God's thoughts are higher than our thoughts, and his plans are greater than our plans. Sometimes the path forward is to go back through Bethel. Sometimes the path goes through Bethel so that he can remind you of his faithfulness and prepare you for what is to come. This isn't about, this isn't about just the past. This is about setting the stage for your next season. Today, I am reminding you that God might want you to go back so that he can position you for what he's about to do next. In Genesis, the 35th chapter, uh, uh, Jacob being, he was being called back to Bethel. And this is a deeply significant moment, not just for this man himself, but for what the place and its name represents. The name Bethel comes from two words, Beth meaning house and El meaning God. Somebody shout house, God, house, God. And so Bethel, it translates to the house of God. And so God was calling Jacob to return to the house of God. This is more than just the name. It's a place of a divine encounter. It's a place where heaven touched earth and where God made his presence known in a tangible way. Bethel is where Jacob first encountered God in an undeniable way, in a life-altering manner. And for some of us, this may have been a long time ago. For some of us, it might have been yesterday. But can your mind go back to the moment where God convinced you that God was God? There's a moment in everybody's life uh, where we recognize that this ain't the God of my mother. This is not the God of the father, of my father, but he has become my God, that he has proven who he is, uh, not just through his words, uh, but I've tasted and seen of his goodness. Uh, and there is no doubt in my mind that God is who he said that he is. But to understand why God called Jacob back to Bethel, we've got to go back to Genesis 28 where Jacob first named the place Bethel. At that time, Jacob was on, on the run. He was fleeing from his brother Esau after he, he tricked him in order to gain the blessing of their father Isaac. Esau, his brother, was hungry and he exchanged his inheritance in order to fulfill, to fill his momentary discomfort. He exchanged his inheritance to fill his momentary discomfort. Ask your neighbor this, is it worth your inheritance? Come on, ask them like they need it. Is it worth your inheritance? I don't know what your it is, but the question is, is it worth your inheritance? Jacob was running. Jacob was scared. He was in a place of fear. He was in a place of loneliness. He was in a place of uncertainty about what was ahead. He had the promise, but he didn't have peace. He had the inheritance, but he didn't have joy. He got what he went after, but it didn't come with what he needed the most because sometimes the way you get it changes it. The way you get it it changes it, but, but in that time of desperation, God, God appeared to Jacob in a dream, in a time of desperation, in a time uh, of desolation. God appears to Jacob in a dream, and I just need to do a room check real quick. Uh, anybody grateful for a God who will still speak to you in the middle of your dry season? Come on, it's a God who shows up in the middle of your desert places. It's a God who shows up even when you didn't want to hear him, when you chose to turn a deaf ear to him. It's a God who shines light into dark places. Anybody grateful for a God who still speaks? 
God, God, God gives Jacob a dream. And, and in that dream, Jacob saw a ladder. It was extending from earth to heaven with angels ascending and angels descending. And above it stood the Lord himself. And he declared this over, over his life, over Jacob's life. He says, I am the Lord, the God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac. He said, the land on which you lie, I will give to you and to your offspring. Isn't it crazy here that while Jacob uh, was fearing his own life and while he was in a place of desolation, in the middle of that comes a promise from the Lord. Uh, have you ever been in a place where you said, Lord, I feel so far from you, uh, but I still hear your promise. Uh, come on, I've turned my back on you, but I still hear your promise. Uh, I've closed my ears to you, but somehow you still remind me uh, of your promise. Uh, I feel like life is closing in on me, uh, but I can still hear your promise in the middle of it. The Bible says when Jacob woke up, it says that he was in awe. He said he was so much in awe that he woke up and he said, surely the Lord is in this place. And I did not know it. Surely the Lord is in this place. And I did not know it. Here he was alone in the wilderness. He was running from his brother Esau. He was burdened with fear. He was burdened with uncertainty. He was unsure of what his future held. Uh, yet in that place of desolation uh, God still met him uh, anybody ever been met by God in a desperate place uh, anybody been met by God in a lonely place uh, when everybody else seemed to turn their back on you uh, God still met you uh, and he spoke to you uh, in your desert place uh, I know some of y'all came in and you look like you got it going on today but the truth is the reason why most of us are in this room right now is because he met us in our low place uh, he didn't meet me on the mountain uh, he met me when I was in my valley season uh, he met me when I was at the end of my rope uh, he met me when I was about to hit rock bottom uh, I was sinking and he saved me uh, I was drowning and he lifted me uh, I was at the end of my rope uh, and he extended his hand of mercy to me uh, I know I can't be the only one uh, but I thank God uh, because he's still the God uh, who steps in right at the nick of time uh, right when I was about to kill myself uh, he stepped in uh, in the middle uh, of my storm right when I was about to uh, turn my back on him uh, he stepped in uh, right in the nick of time uh, right when I thought I was gonna go crazy uh, when I thought I was about to lose my mind uh, he stepped in uh, right in the middle uh, of my storm uh, and I just wish I had seven five people uh, who would give God thanks uh, for stepping in right uh, in the nick uh, of time uh, my bishop would say he may not come when you want him uh, but he comes right on time uh, but here's what I recognize uh, not only uh, does he not come when you want him uh, but, but when you want him to come but sometimes I didn't want him to come uh, but he still stepped in come on in the middle uh, I wish I had some real people uh, that there are some dark times uh, that it's gotten so dark uh, that I don't even want you to come anymore. But despite what I want, you didn't give me what I want. Uh, you gave me what I need. Uh, can you open up your mouth and thank God uh, for giving you what you need? He gave me what I needed. 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 Uh, I didn't just need my wants. I didn't just need my desires. I needed what he needed, what he wanted me to have. And he gave it, he gave it, he gave it. Jacob didn't expect to find God there. He didn't anticipate this encounter in the middle of nowhere. But when he woke up, when he came to himself, he realized that he had stumbled on holy ground. Have you, ever, have you ever been in a place where you were so overwhelmed by life? Where you were so consumed by life, consumed by fear, so full of doubt that the thought of hearing from God seemed impossible. Like you didn't even know how, you didn't even know to look for him because of how far you had gone. Have you ever felt like you were in the wilderness all alone? And have you ever felt like the weight of your mistakes had silenced the voice of God? 
But isn't it crazy how so, somehow and some way in that same place of brokenness is the same place that God showed up. Come on, the same place where I was broken, the same place where I was hurting, the same place where I was wounded is the same place that God showed up. And for some of us, it wasn't in the church, but God still showed up. When I was intentionally seeking him, he showed up. But even when I wasn't looking for him, he showed up. At my lowest moment, he's the God who showed up. And then I came to myself and I realized that Surely uh, the Lord is in this place uh, and I did not know it. Uh, can somebody open your mouth and say that? Uh, surely the Lord uh, is in this place uh, and I did not know it. Surely uh, the Lord uh, is in this place uh, and I did not know it. Uh, I thought he had left me, but surely the Lord was in this place uh, and I did not know it. Uh, I thought I had gone too far, but surely uh, the Lord uh, is in this place uh, and I did uh, not uh, know it. Uh, I know you feel like he's not there, uh, but surely uh, the Lord is in this place uh, and I did not know it. Open your eyes to see it. Surely the Lord is in this place. Place. He is the God uh, who meets us wherever we are uh, in whatever condition we're in. Uh, he's the God who shows up. Uh, if we're on the mountain, he's there. Uh, if we're in the valley, he's there. Uh, come on, in the place of promise, he's there. Uh, but even in the wilderness, he's there. Uh, if I ascend to the heavens, he's there. Uh, but even if I were to make my bed in hell, come on, I wish somebody knew that was the God you serve. Uh, even if I make my bed in hell, he promised he'd be there also because he is Jehovah Shama, the God who is there, the eternal God, the omnipresent God, the God who always comes through. There is nowhere that he is not. There is nowhere that he is not. Everywhere I go, I get a glimpse of him. Everywhere I go, I get a glimpse of him. Come on, come on, come on. Have you ever been in a season of your life and thought to yourself, I didn't know it at the time, but God, you were with me all of the time. Come on, he was with me in my high place. He was with me in my low place. He was with me in the hospital room. He was with me in my sleepless nights. He was with me on that job I didn't want. He was with me. Somebody open up your mouth and say, he was with me all the time. Come on, in the middle of rejection, he was with me. In the middle of loss, he was with me. In the middle of grief, he was with me. When my heart was heavy, he was with me. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me. Lead me to the rock that's high. That's higher than I. Come on, take a step back. Think things over. He was there all of the time. And for somebody in this room, you don't have the same testimony as Jacob, but your testimony is surely the Lord is in this place. And I did know it. I did know it. I can sense him. I can feel him. I can sense him and I can feel him. Come on, somebody make the declaration that he's in this place. He's in this place. He's in this place. He's here right now. He's here right now. Real quick, just somebody offer the offer up praise, offer up worship for a God who's present. The Bible says that he is a present help in the time of trouble. In fact, it says he's a very present help in the time of trouble. It's a sure thing that your God's there. It's a sure thing that your God, don't you let your emotions fool you. Don't you let your eyes trick you. The truth is God was there all of the time. He was there. 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 And 
he's here right now surely the Lord is in this place and I know it 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 I know it I know it there's no doubt in my mind I know it Bethel Bethel was more it was more than just a location it is a place of spiritual significance. It represented a reminder of God's promises. It represented a place where Jacob had seen God's faithfulness firsthand. This ain't a secondhand account. I've seen his goodness. God was calling Jacob to return to the foundation of his relationship with him, to the very place where his voice first spoke promises over Jacob's life. It was as if God was saying, Jacob, before you take the next step, before you face the challenges that are ahead, I want you to come back to the place where you knew me most deeply. I want you to come back to the place where you heard my voice. I want you to come back to the place where you felt my presence. And I believe that the Lord is speaking the the same over us today Bethel it represents the moments and the places in our lives where we encountered God in a real way the moments when we knew without a shadow of a doubt that he was with us that he had a plan for us and that his promises are true and sometimes God calls us back to our Bethel not because we're meant to stay there necessarily but because we need to remember and for somebody today, Bethel may be the memory of when you first surrendered your heart to Jesus. It may be when you felt, first felt his, his love wash over you in a way that changed everything. It could be the time when he spoke to you during a worship service or in the midnight hour when you knew he was calling you and setting you apart for a greater purpose. It's that place where God whispered dreams into your heart, dreams that have since been buried by life. But God, he was calling Jacob back to Bethel. before He said, he said before you face what's ahead, before you step into this next chapter come back to my presence come back to where you first found me come back to your first love and today God is calling his people back to Bethel not just to remember what he did but to be reminded of what he is doing Jacob's his response to God's call though is the key he says put away the foreign gods all right that are among you and purify yourselves and change your garments. Happy homecoming. Put away the foreign gods that are among you and purify yourselves and change your garments. I believe I'll say it one more time. Put away the foreign gods that are among you and purify yourselves and change your garments. Before Jacob and his household could step into Bethel, the house of God, they had to take an honest look at what they were carrying. They had to be real about what they were actually holding on to. They had to make a decision to lay aside every idol, to lay aside every distraction, to lay aside every weight, to make a decision to lay aside every idol, every distraction, and every weight. One more time. He, they had to make a decision, not a prayer call. They made a decision because I can't lay aside your idols. All right. I can't lay aside your distractions. I can't lay aside your weight. Look at somebody and say, that's your job. These, these foreign gods, they represented more than just physical idols. They symbolized anything that had taken priority over God. And one more time, they had symbolized anything that had taken priority over God. Anything that had stolen their attention, anything that had stolen their affection, anything that had stolen their devotion away from him. And I need you to hear this and I need you to hear me good. God is calling us to do the same thing today. He is calling us to purify ourselves. He is calling us to shed the weights that have clung to us and to let go of the things that have taken our focus away from him because we cannot move forward while holding on to what's holding us back Jacob understood that if he was going to return to Bethel he could not go with the same baggage that had burdened him before 
Tell somebody it's time to drop off the bags. There had to be a shift. There had to be a purification. There had to be a sanctification. And so he turned his entire household, not just himself, but he turned to his entire household, to everyone who was on the journey with him, and said, put away the foreign gods. Now let me get in your business just for one second. What are the gods in your life that you need to put away? What are the things that have crept in and set themselves up in the temple of your heart? Maybe it's pride. Mm -hmm. That voice that says, I don't need nobody's help. I can handle this on my own. Even that voice that says, as long as I got King Jesus, stop it, y'all. That ain't even Bible. I don't need nobody else. It's a lie. Sorry, Vicky. Maybe it's fear. Fear of failure. Fear of rejection. Fear of the unknown. Fear of success. Maybe it's these wounds that you've been carrying for years that still have not healed. That hurt that you've been carrying so long that now it's a part of your identity. You don't even know who you are without it. Whatever it is, God is saying today is the day for you to lay it down. Look at somebody say it's time to lay it down. It's time. It's time to lay it down. Come on, tell them like they need to hear it because they do. It's time for you to lay it down. God has given you opportunity today to make a decision to lay it down. I can't take it from you. You've got to make a decision to lay it down. We can't pray it out of you. God says it's a decision for you to lay it down. There are some things that you're going to have to do with you and Jesus. I'm not going to be there in your midnight hour. This is between you and Jesus. Jesus. Ain't gonna be no organ, ain't gonna be no band, it's just you and Jesus, and you're gonna have to make a decision that this is the day that I lay it down. Come on, I need about 80 people who have made up your mind that this is the day that I make a decision to lay it all down. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, and I arrest that thought, I arrest that thought that oh, I said that before and it didn't work. Today's a new day with brand new mercies. It's a new opportunity. I know I said it yesterday, but I'm about to say it again. Today is the day that I lay it down. Today is the day of great exchange. It's the day that I exchange these weights for your grace. It's the day that I exchange these sins for your garments of praise. Today is the day of great exchange. Come on, testify to somebody. Say, today is my day of exchange. I can't speak it for you, but today is my day of exchange. The thing that I came in with, I've made up my mind that I won't leave with it. It might have followed me. It might have followed me to my question, but once I got through the doors, I made up my mind that I'm going to cast my cares. Come on. I'm going to cast my cares. I didn't come just because it was homecoming. I came because I knew that I had a meeting with God. I had a meeting with God uh, where he would allow me uh, to exchange my old garments uh, for his new garments. Uh, tell somebody it's time to lay it down. Because there is power in preparation. Uh oh. I said there's power in preparation. I know you heard the prophetic word over your life. The prophet spoke it, but did you prepare for it? Before we can step into the fullness of what God has for us, we've got to actually make a decision to purify our hearts. Yeah. Hebrews 12 and 1 says it like this. It says, let us lay aside, let us lay aside, not let us pray to, let us lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us let us lay aside every weight and sin the bible says that there are sins and there are weights not everything is sinful not everything is sinful but it is weighty and tell somebody carefully it's time for you to lose some weight all right. 
Y'all all right? It's, it's a spiritual thing. It's, we stay in the spirit. They didn't mean it no other way, just, but it's time. It's time for you to lose some weight. Lay aside every weight. Lay aside every weight. Not just some weights, not the weights that you want to get rid of. Not the weights that are easy for you to get rid of. But lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely. You know those hidden habits? Uh huh. Uh huh. We got them. Those secret sins? Yeah. We don't talk about it, but we got them. Those unspoken struggles that try to hold you hostage, God is saying that it's time for you to lay it down because remember, he already broke the power of sin off your life. I was waiting, I was waiting, I was waiting, I was waiting. I was waiting because that was good news from glory. I said he broke the power of sin off of your life. In other words, sin is like chains that are around your ankles, but the lock ain't closed on it. I'm going to preach to this side of the room. I said, sin is like a chain around your ankle, but ain't no lock on it. Whenever you get ready, whenever you get ready, you can just... Woo. Come on, come on, come on, come on. I know I don't got too many people, and I know you don't got too much room, but I wish somebody as a prophetic act would just... Come on, come on, come on. There's some things uh, that have been holding me back. Uh, but today I realize that I can just... Behold, uh, I have given you power to, tr to tread upon uh, serpents and scorpions uh, and over all the power of the enemy here. Uh, and nothing, even my sin, uh, nothing uh, shall by any means harm you. Can you open up your mouth? Uh, and give God glory, because I'm no longer bound. I am free, praise the Lord. I'm free, no longer bound. No longer bound. Woo. Somebody just open up your mouth boldly and shout, the chain is broken. The chains are broken. The... Come on, a praise should have went right there. Because he whom the sun sets free is free indeed. Somebody shout, I'm free indeed. Come on, shout, I'm free indeed. Come on, when you shout it, we're not just saying I'm free for sure. That's true. That's true. But free indeed. Indeed. I'm free indeed. In other words, I'm free in my actions. I'm free in the way I walk. I'm free in the way I talk. I'm free in the way I'm free in deed, in deed. Now every believer, every blood washed believer, I wish you would open up your mouth and give Jesus praise because he broke the chains. He, he broke the chains. He broke, he broke the chains. He broke the chains. He broke the chains. Somebody just shout, I know he did, I know he did. I know he did, I know he did, I know. Y'all sit down, sit down. Sit down, we got a long way to go. Ooh, but real quick, somebody shout, the devil's a liar. Come on, he's been trying to trick you into believing that you will always be this way. But the devil is a liar and God is exalted. Open up your mouth and say, I know he broke the chain. Chains of abuse broken. Chains of addiction broken. Chains of suicide broken. Somebody shout, he broke it, he broke it, he broke it. He broke it, he broke it. I gotta go. Sit down. It's hard to get people to sit down who've been freed. I don't think somebody who's been freed from slavery would just stand there at the master's house. Oh, real quick, let me give you a lesson. 
This is why we celebrate Juneteenth. Oh God, help me today. Because for some people, they stayed because they hadn't gotten the word yet. Y'all will catch that later. They stayed because they hadn't gotten the word yet. Uh, the announcement hadn't come yet. Uh, that slavery had ended. Uh, but I pronounce over you today uh, that this is your Juneteenth. This is your Juneteenth. This is your Juneteenth. And today, uh, the announcement has been made that we're free at last. Free at last. Thank God over. Oh Slap three people and tell them if you didn't know you're free, you're free, you're free, you're free. If you didn't know, now you know. If you didn't know, now you know. If you didn't know. Somebody shout, Jesus did it. On freedom break out now in Jesus name freedom break out from the front to the back oh God from the sanctuary to the bridge to the well to the ark let freedom ring let freedom ring let freedom ring let freedom ring freedom has a sound to it open up your mouth and you're free indeed Y'all trying to mess up my little sermon. Sit down. Thank you, Jesus. All right, sit down for real. Sit down. Sit down. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Listen, so, so when Jacob, when he arrives at Bethel, he doesn't just stand there reminiscing. He's not just talking about the good old days. He builds an altar and calls the place El Bethel, meaning the God of Bethel. And this is significant because it's not just about remembering the encounter. It's about responding to it. Let's say it again. It's not just about remembering it's about responding to it. An altar is more than a pile of stones. It's a declaration. It's saying, God, you met me here before, and I believe that you're going to meet me here again. I remember your faithfulness, and I trust you with my future. Chill out, sir. Chill out, chill out, chill out. So some of us, we, yeah, some of us, we got to build an altar today. Not with physical stones, but with stones of praise, yeah. I'm building an altar with stones of worship. I'm building an altar with stones of remembrance. I'm building an altar with stones of commitment. We need to declare, Lord, I'm back at Bethel. And I'm here to build and rebuild my faith. I'm here to renew my worship. I'm here to reclaim my, I'm here to reclaim my promise. Jacob's. Jacob's altar at Bethel was his declaration that I remember the God who met me in my distress and I know he will be with me now. And let me tell you, when you build that altar of remembrance, it's not just for you. It's for everybody who's around you. It's bigger than you. Look at somebody and say, it's bigger than you. It's a testimony that says this is where God met me. This is where, where he spoke, where he moved, where he prepared me to come. But not only that, uh, since I know that he met me here, I can tell you how to get there. Come on. You can't take nobody where you've never been. Uh, and so, because, come on, come on. And so I remember where he brought me from so I can tell you how he how we got there you might be sitting here thinking I've gone too far Bethel is a distant memory I've made too many mistakes but let me remind you Jacob was far from perfect he had plenty of reasons to to think he was disqualified but God's call to return was not based on Jacob's perfection it was based on God's perfection 
And the same goes for you. God's call to come back to Bethel is not based on how perfect you are. It's based on how perfect his love is. His love is relentless. It's relentless. It's the love that says, I will meet you in your mess. I ain't scared of your mess. I'm going to meet you in your mess. And I'm calling you back to my promise. Psalm 103, 17 says, but the steadfast love of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting. And those who fear him, on those who fear him and his righteousness to children's children. In other words, this love is generational. That's good news for somebody. Come on, there's a parent in this room that's been praying for your son. You've been praying for your daughter. But the Lord said that this love is generational. There's a legacy attached to what I'm doing here. I've got a promise for your children, children's children. Come on, that ain't my word, that's his word. It's for your children's children's children. And the truth of the matter here is that some of you are recipients of that because you ain't the first generation. I said you're not the first generation, but I'm living on the promise that was made to my great grandfather. I'm living on a promise that was made to my grandmother. I'm living on a promise that was made to my mother. And when I was unbelieving, and when I was wayward, they stood firm on the promise of what the Lord had spoken over their lives. And I hear the Lord saying, uh, don't forget, I'm not doing this for your sake, but I'm doing it for my name's sake. Uh, come on, come on, come on. Uh, it would be a little shaky if he was doing it for my sake, uh, but for your name's sake. Give the glory, not just out of my life, uh, but out of my children's life. Out of my children's children's life. Lord, give the glory. Give the glory, give the glory, give the glory. Come on, I need a hundred people to just open up your mouth and say, Lord, whatever you do, just get the glory. Don't let it all be for nothing. Don't let it all be for nothing. All the hell that I've been doing, get the glory, get the glory, get the glory. All of the heartache, get the glory, get the glory, get the glory. All the sacrificing, get the glory, get the glory, get all the suffering, get the glory. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared to the glory that shall be revealed. One more time, just so Lord, get the glory, get the glory, get the glory. Get the glory, get the glory. I gotta hurry up. I want y'all to come back again, so I gotta, I gotta hurry. God, oh God, thank you. God took Jacob back to Bethel, not to keep him there, but to prepare him for what was next. Bethel was the place where Jacob would remember who God was, but, but it was also the place that would propel him into becoming Israel. Come on, the father of a nation. I wish you knew your Bible. It was the place where God uh, would propel him into becoming Israel, the father of, the, of a nation. Uh, your Bethel is not just about your past. Uh, it's about the future that God is setting you up for. Isaiah 43, uh, 18 and 19. Let me give you a Bible. It says, remember not the former things, uh, nor consider the things of old. What are you doing, Lord? Remember not the former things uh, nor consider the things of old uh, he says behold I am doing a new thing somebody shout a new thing a new thing uh, come on I'm doing a new thing uh, and then he goes on to say uh, this is the thing that blows my mind uh, he says I'm doing a new thing check the tense I am doing a new thing but now it springs forth Somebody will catch that later. I am doing a new thing, but now it springs forth. Somebody shout now, now, now. Come on, because what you've been waiting for is happening right now. What you've been seeking God for, it is happening right now. We keep saying God is getting ready to do it. I declare that God has done it. Now it springs forth. He says, do you not perceive it? Can you not sense it? Can you not sense it? 
witness it. Father, open their eyes to see what is real. Open their eyes to see what is true. I am making a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Open your eyes to see it. Can you open up your mouth and thank God for making all things new and for doing a new thing. Come on, I'm doing a new thing. But before you step into it, I want you to remember who I am. And I want you to remember what I have already done. I want you to remember what I have already done. I want to encourage you today. When God takes you back, it's not a setback. It's a set up. It's a setup. It's his way of saying, I have not forgotten my promises. I have not changed my plans. For I am the Lord your God. And I change not. I am the Lord your God. And I change not. When everything else and everybody else is switching up on you, God says, I am the same yesterday, today, and forevermore I am the God who spoke to you then and I'm the God who's speaking to you now come on and I sense in my spirit that God is stirring somebody today you've been feeling distant like Bethel is a story from your past but God is saying it's time for you to come back it's time for you to come back it's not too late come back come back come back I can't reach everybody so I need you to preach with me touch somebody to your left and to your right and just say come back come back come come back come back come back come back to the place where you first knew me come back to the place where you first heard my voice come back to the place where you first met me come back to your first love come back so I can show you uh, that I'm still here. I haven't gone anywhere. I am the faithful God uh, who keeps my promises uh, to a thousand generations. Uh, come back so I can show you uh, that I'm still ready uh, to lead you into what I said that you will have. Uh, God said uh, you will have what I decree. Uh, I heard somebody say uh, I shall have what I decree. Uh, I'm not going to get everything that I said uh, but I can stand firm on what he said I shall have what he has decreed and I speak over you today that your return to Bethel is igniting something in you that's gonna launch you forward into the fullness of who you are in God and what he has in store for you I know you don't understand it all but you don't gotta understand it just know the one who gave the plan is faithful to complete it he's faithful to perform it uh, your return uh, to the place of encounter is setting the stage uh, for the greatest outpouring uh, that you've ever experienced uh, who am I talking to in this room uh, God is not just calling you back uh, for the purpose of reflection uh, he's calling you back for revelation uh, he's not calling you back for reflection uh, I'm calling you into revelation uh, he's calling you to remind you of his power so that you can move forward uh, with greater authority, uh, greater vision, uh, greater faith. Uh, somebody shout greater, 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 greater. He's the God that goes from faith to faith uh, and from glory to glory. Uh, I'm never pulling you back uh, except to push you forward. Uh, I'll never pull you back if I don't aim to put you forward. I remember when I was a kid, I would play the pinball machine. And if you ever saw a pinball machine, the first move you gotta make is to pull it back. But as hard as you pull it back, is as hard as it's propelled forward. And I prophesy in this season uh, that as you pull back, the Lord is getting ready to launch you uh, into greater, 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 greater. Somebody just shout, greater is coming, greater. Greater is coming, greater. Greater is coming. Uh, come on, come back to Bethel. 
come back to the place where you first trusted him. Come back to the place. Uh, return. Uh, this return is not just about your healing. Uh, it's about your launching. Uh, it's not just about your healing. Uh, it's about your launching. I am doing something new. Uh, and for somebody here, the enemy has been whispering lies. Uh, he's been telling you that you're too far gone. Uh, that your flame has gone out. Uh, but I fan into flame. I fan into flame uh, every I fan into flame the fire of God uh, that is all on your altar uh, I believe by faith uh, that it's going from just a small flicker uh, to a roaring fire in Jesus name uh, somebody shout may the fire on my altar never burn out may the fire on my altar never burn out may the fire on my altar never burn out i prophesy that there are doors that are about to swing wide open to you i said they're swinging wide open to you there is breakthrough that's coming not just for you but for your family for your ministry, for your community. Somebody shout breakthrough, 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 breakthrough. God is using your return as a testimony that shakes the very ground that you walk on. He is using it, he is using it. He's calling his people back to the place of encounter. He's calling you back, he is calling you back he is calling you back. He is calling you back. And I believe, I gotta rush on. I believe that today is a turning point for many of you. Your back to the future moment is here and now. The God of Bethel, the God who met Jacob in his moment of fear and desperation is calling you. He's calling you not just to remember the past, but to prepare for the future. He's saying, come back so I can send you forward. Come back so I can prepare you for what's in store. For eyes have not seen and ears have not heard. It has not entered into the heart of man. The things that I'm preparing for them that love me. Do not miss your moment. Don't let this moment pass you by. Don't let this moment pass you by. Somebody lift your hands to the Lord and just make a declaration that I'm not letting it pass me by. I won't let it pass me by. But here I am, Lord. Here I am, Lord, with a fresh yes. Here I am with a fresh yes. Here I am with a fresh yes. I've got a fresh yes. I've got a fresh yes. But listen, we can't talk about Bethel without talking about the one who fulfills every promise that was made at Bethel. Because you see, Jacob's Bethel was the place where he realized that God was with him. Are you with me? But our Bethel is found in Jesus Christ, the one who is Emmanuel. God tabernacled with us. Uh, Jesus is the ladder that Jacob saw in that dream. He's the connection between heaven uh, and earth. He's the bridge uh, between humanity and God. Uh, Jesus is the one uh, who makes every encounter with God possible. The one who takes us back so that we can move forward. Uh, somebody shout, it's all because of Jesus. It's all because of Jesus. And here's the good news. Just as God called Jacob back to Bethel and renewed his covenant with him. Jesus calls us back to the cross and he reminds us that his covenant is eternal. He says, come back to where your sins were washed away. Come back to where your burdens were lifted. Come back to where grace and mercy flow like a river flow, 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 flow. He wants you to come back. He wants you to come back. 
He's the same Jesus who calls you back. Is also the one who goes before you. He is the Alpha. He is the Omega. He is the beginning. He is the end. He is the first and last. He is the only begotten of the Father. He knows your past, but he holds your future. Come on, you can stand in this room. I'm done. I'm done.